So now I'd like to look at uh, the second section of this um, and add to this sketch right here everything that's happening in the base beyond where we stopped. This E flat is this spot. That's, so that's the downbeat of measure four. Of course, measure one. That's a good point here. Okay. So now we have E flat. It'd be better to have this all on one staff. I should have um, landscape paper, but too late for that. Okay. So we got E flat, D, C, B. I'm going to repeat the E flat from here to here, just so I can see it. D, C, B. And then that B goes to B flat. B flat. A, G, down to the low F sharp. A, G, F sharp. And I'm saying that I think since this is the, the lowest point we reach and then we jump away from it, and then later on, this really centers around G, that this is a significant point right here. Okay. Um, so then from the F-sharp, this goes up an octave to F-sharp. I'm going to do that just to show the octave change. And then it slides down a half step to F-natural, D, B, A-flat. I guess I didn't need the flat on there. G, A-flat. G, and then A flat, oops, A flat, F, G, okay, and this G at the end is there a big five? Although, to be honest, I would probably put it here because the G arrives strongly at this point. And this is all prolongation of the G. So now what I've sort of identified, it's not sort of, what I've identified is C, B flat, E flat, F sharp, G. And then there's an implication that that will go to C in the next part. I'm going to pull this down here to look at it. Just that part. C, B flat, E flat, F sharp, G, and then C in the next section. Um, so this one is a little different. Um, of course, here's the 151. This excerpt is just, you know, it's broken right there. You see how this F sharp is a neighbor note? Now here, when we're in minor, we don't have this as commonly as our background figure, where we have this as the predominant. When you're in minor, it's actually very common to have the relative major as your intermediate harmony. And you see how that can form a divided leap which is also an arpeggiation of the tonic triad add at the background level. And then you see this B flat is a little 5-1 on the E flat, emphasizing it. Okay. So a couple things arguing for the importance of the notes that I've put here is with you know, C, of course, original tonic. This E flat is strengthened by going 5-1 on it. This G is strengthened by this F sharp leading tone, secondary dominant, resolving to it, and then a really long prolongation of it. And then, of course, C at the end. Okay. Um, very quickly, I just want to sketch a few things in. Um, you can see, um, I'm going to leave this for a minute right here. Um, I'm 
I'm going to come back to that because that's just too big of a payoff to just dump right now. Okay, so let's look here at E flat through to the end. Um, if we analyze this harmonically, you get 5, 7, you get a deceptive cadence to 6, 2, 6, 5, credential 6, 4, 5, 3, 7, 1, etc. Okay. We all know about 5, 7 going to 6, 5, and 6, 2, 5, 1, you know, very common chord progression. Um, but here you can really see that this progression is, in fact, a double neighbor around G. This 5 going to 6 is an upper neighbor. And then the F going to G is a lower neighbor. And overall, this is a double neighbor figure on the G. So that's interesting, I think. Um, here, we've gone to E flat. And then you see how this actually walks in that down now to F sharp? This is a very common way to expand upon the deeper structure. You can take E flat to F sharp. Which is like this. You take the F sharp, you drop it down an octave, and then you just fill in passing motion. It's a way to take this little thing right here and stretch it out to a long piece of music. We could go through this and fill in details of what is hierarchically more significant than other things. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. Okay, You could do that if you want. Um, here, F sharp to G, um, this is actually arpeggiating down a 5-7 chord, F, D, B, G with the A flat upper neighbor. Okay. Here, yeah. Um, here's the the big payoff for this analysis. I think. Look at the baseline of the first measure. You see how this goes, C, E flat, F sharp, G. Cover up those notes. C, E flat, F sharp, G. Does that look familiar? C, E flat, F sharp, G. Of course it does. C, E flat, F sharp, G. So you can see in the very first measure, Beethoven is telling you what the whole piece is going to be. Frickin' brilliant, don't you think? So look at this. This measure presents C, E flat, F sharp, G, which this C shares um, this, she, this C is part of this smaller scale one. It's part of the larger scale one. And um, it's pretty amazing, right, that this one measure motive in the bass then controls the unfolding of the next 10 measures. Even more amazing is what happens in the next part of the piece. And I encourage you to go and look at the score. I am SLP. You can get the score for free. Listen to the recording. But what you will see is this, which is remarkable. Get out of here, cat. Go, go. Okay. Um, when you have a sonata form in a minor key, usually what you have is the primary theme is in tonic. Then you get a transition, which takes you to the relative major for the secondary theme or secondary key center, which carries you through the exposition. And then towards the end of the development, get out of here, dang it. Towards the end of the development, you get the structural dominant and then the entire recapitulation 
is in the tonic key. Okay, so if you map out the measures of the whole movement, you find out you know, to make up some measures, like this is measure one, this is measure 85, this is measure 132. These measures are not accurate, I'm just giving you a for instance of what they might be in 208. Okay. And in the piece, right before this G, we definitely get the F sharp as well. So this piece can be understand, understood in this way. We have one, three, five, one. Wow, that was really poorly laid out over the course of the whole movement. And then within this initial C, we have one, three, five, one, over measures one through 10. And then we have one, three, five, one. <laughs> Running out of space. In measure one. So this initial C kicks off a one measure statement of this background figure, a 10 measure statement of this background figure, and a statement of it that spans the entire movement. All right, cool, right? I really encourage you to go and listen to the piece, look at the score. When you trace the baseline, you will see things just like here at the beginning where all, there's all this stepwise motion and then all of a sudden there'll be a big cadence with a leap and it's one of these um, structural pitches. Okay, so that's all for now for the Beethoven analysis. I'm gonna um, post some stuff about uh, writing counterpoint. Uh, soon, um, I have to record a couple lectures for another class, but I'll get that up later this afternoon. Enjoy these for the time being.